South Africans have just met each other, really. It was only in 90 or 94 that we began this journey. As Kada Asmal used to say, now that the fight for the mountains is over, the struggle for the plains begins. We are the leaders of this journey through the plains. The next 20 years, what will we leave our children in a country with so much potential? And that energy comes from looking in the mirror and asking yourself, am I doing work that gives me joy? Am I passionate about it? If you've got a job and a parking bay and a job description, I'm sorry. The question is, have you got a role? Have you got a mission? Because being South African is this extraordinary invitation in an era of change. We are living in the fastest change in this planet's history. The geologists have just renamed this era. Geologists, these are people who are scientists who study rock. They've renamed the era. They call it the Anthropocene. Anthropology, humans. Because human beings, think about this for a minute. Human beings, for the first time in this planet's history, in its entire geological history, are moving more rock, more soil than nature. When I was born, there were two billion people on the planet. There are now seven billion. We're heading to 12. We are the, 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 we are the, the, the species that have changed this planet. We are the species that have changed each other. We have lived largely through 70 years of relative peace. We live 30 years longer than our grandparents. We know each other now. The world is flat. We can see what silly people do. And we can see what great people do. A kid in Bangladesh with access to 4G has the same information as a kid in Silicon Valley. They may not have the same life chance because their leadership or the institutions or the infrastructure doesn't work, but we've been invited into the century of creativity, the century of the digital world that's rewriting the rules of all business and of all societies, the century of discovering that the East is not just up the road, but is three billion people that have stood up in the last 20 years in China and India and Southeast Asia and have doubled the living standards of their people in one generation. We are living in a world where Silicon Valley is pouring out new ideas, new companies, new technologies that startle the old. And those of us who are living in the past who are driving the car looking out the rear view mirror, hoping to see the future, are gonna get nowhere. We need a generation who look in the rear view mirror to remember how we got in the room, but are looking out the front window to where we're going. And we need that now. So behind there's like my grandfather's crawl. And that crawl was actually my grandfather's pride and joy. He had about, I think he had like 30 cows because you we were limited in terms of having the number of cows you could have in the village. And he had 30 cows and that was a lot. If I'm not mistaken, he had like the most in the village and he had like 60 sheep, which was also like a big deal. And um, I'll never forget this one time when my, I thought I'd, when I was about eight years old, eight, nine years old, I thought I'd lost one of his cows. And it was a new one of his new bulls and I got really terrified because my grandfather loved his cows. And so I, it was around seven o'clock in the evening. So I walked up and down the entire village. I went to the, you know, I'd go up the mountain to look for this cow. And it literally, by the time I got back, it must have been half past 10 in the evening at night. The lights are out in the village, it's dark. And um, when I arrived, and I didn't know how I was gonna tell my grandfather, so he's very angry. He says, Uvela, what did? Where are you coming from? And then, uh, then you, uh, he says, I was going to look for, you know, your cow. And then he says, Incometen, what cow are you talking about? And I tell him, your, your, your new cow, the one he just bought. And he says, I don't give a damn about no cow. What if something had happened to you, right? And my, I always had this perception that my grandfather loved his livestock more than he loved us or his children. <laughs> so it came to me as such a shock to the system. It's quite interesting. And I think a lot of the times, I think a lesson for me in that 
is that a lot of times in our lives when we make these assumptions about things and people that we know, we make these completely incorrect assumptions or we create these false realities that are completely untrue and you become really surprised. I was like, I didn't know my grandfather loved me. Well, he never said he loved me, but that when he said that I knew he does, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can lose a few more cows now. 